everyone, I'm Keely and this is Voice of a Creative and today I'm going to show you how to trace a t-shirt so you can make your own jersey t-shirt pattern. So this is the t-shirt that I decided to trace. Now this is a little t-shirt for my niece and it's because I want to use up some of my scraps of jersey to make um, li some little t-shirts for her. So I will show you how to trace a little t-shirt like this. It should be very similar for any jersey t-shirt. The only change that you might have to make for um, an adult t-shirt is the fact that the arms might be slightly different because there's slightly more shaping um, and that might be something that's slightly different for this video. But other than that, this is how you trace a t-shirt pattern. I also show you how to add the grown on sleeves near the end of the video as well. So let's have a look. Okay, so the things you are going to need are the t-shirt that you are tracing, something to trace onto, so I am using this which is just baking paper, a pencil, I like to use pencil, you can use a pen, but I like to use pencil, this is a 4B pencil, a drawing pencil. Potentially you might need some pins, you might also need some tape, I sometimes use this to tape the paper down. I'm using a ruler um, just in case I do need it and then some paper scissors as well, especially if you're cutting this, which is paper. So the first thing to do is I'm going to be creating three pattern pieces. There'll be the front, the back piece, and then the sleeve pieces. So I'm going to be able to cut each of these on the fold. So that means that my pattern piece needs to be one side, one half of the t-shirt. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to do the back piece first. So I'm going to turn the t-shirt inside out, first of all. Now, be <coughs> Sorry. now please remember, if you're doing something like this, you will need to add on your seam allowances. When you buy something that's ready to wear, it's just got the edge that has been overlocked. Um, so you will need to do that. So what you need to do is I'm going to tuck the sleeves in on both sides and then I'm simply going to fold the t-shirt in half. Now I'm matching the top seams. This is quite tricky because there's poppers on the seam but you know it is, it is trial and error. So I'm just going to match the shoulder seams, flatten it out, match the side seams as well. Slightly easier when it's inside because you can see where those seams are. And just make sure that it's really neatly folded in half. Now this bit is the most important bit because if you get it folded wrong, then you will end up with a very odd shaped garment, the likelihood is. So I'm just matching them as well as I can. That seems good there. Make sure those sleeves are tucked in. Now, obviously, I'm using a little girl's t-shirt. You can do this the same um, with a, a larger t-shirt. What you need to just remember is if you're doing um, like an adult t-shirt, there will be some shaping in there. Um, little girl's t-shirts or uh, children's t-shirts don't tend to uh, have that. So I've now got my um, shape. It's not perfect, but it's as good as I can get it at this time. There's quite a lot of bulk in that shoulder. Um, but it should be it should be fine like that. Okay, so then I'm going to lay out my baking paper. Sometimes all it wants to do is roll up again like that. Okay, so just weighed that down with some scissors because why not? Now, what you need to do is take the folded t-shirt, so this is the back piece, and you place your folded line along the edge. That way you know that it's a straight uh, line. Okay. So place your folded line, just place your fingers on it to make sure it's not too far over. So I've got that positioned on there. And then I'm simply going to get the pencil and trace around it. Now this is, there's probably a more accurate way to do it, but this is the way I do it and it seemed to work. It is still trial and error. Um, it, you know, if you buy a pattern, they've done all this bit for you. Um, but I like doing it this way because I know it's going to fit um, and I know that this is the style of t-shirt that I want. 
So I'm just going to do a sketched line just at the top and then I'm going to bring that line down and round. I'm not worrying about um, seam allowances at the moment, I'm literally just tracing the shapes that I see. Now you might need to use a ruler for this bit if your uh, pencil control isn't as good and then it's slightly curved at the bottom there. So I've got my basic shape, it's gone a bit wobbly there, I'm just going to straighten that up. So that was my basic shape here. So then I need to add on my seam allowances. Now, according to what you want to do. So I know at the top and bottom, I will do a double fold. So I need to make sure that I add enough at the top and bottom that is gonna, I'm gonna be able to do the double fold. Then at the shoulder, it's just gonna be a one centimeter as well as here and at the sides. So I'm just gonna add that on. So I'm gonna use my ruler to just measure. So I'm gonna do two centimeters. So I'm just doing, measuring from the line I've drawn downwards. And then I will just use a curve to join those together. Now this might be where kind of a French curve or something comes in handy to get your curve right. Obviously, I mean, I'm an art teacher, so actually drawing a, a curve for me um, the whole drawing side of things actually works quite well, um, but you know, use the tools that make it easier for you. So then one centimetre on the sides, I'm just measuring one centimetre at the sides and exactly the same. Now you could use the ruler for this, but if you want. Oh, there is a slight curve in it actually. Hmm. So that's my seam allowance on that side and you just need to obviously remember that when you're sewing. <laughs> um, and then at the neck band here, I want to add two centimeters because I want to do it double folded. You could add a, a neck band on. Um, I just prefer to roll it. It might be something that I change later on. And then one centimeter on the shoulder. And on the arm and I'm just going to join up those dashes like that so I've got the the actual piece and then I've got the bits that I am going to alter and then what I'm going to write on it I'm just going to label it so back I think uh, back t-shirt now mine is for my niece who is Rosina so I'm just going to write Rosina on it so I remember and then one centimeter seam allowance. Now you could, if you wanted, add um, a notch on and then you could transfer across to the front piece. I don't worry about that. I'm hoping that because I'm doing it from this t-shirt, it should be fine. And otherwise I just wiggle it about. Um, so I'm gonna leave that piece like that. Now what you need to do is basically flip it so the t-shirt is the other way around. So what I'm going to do for um, this bit, because the back is longer, I'm just going to fold up the back piece because otherwise it's getting in the way. And I fold it over. This is where the pins might come in handy. Um, it might be that you want to just pin um, just in the seams the t-shirt together to just make sure it stays in half. Uh, sometimes that works out easier. The more complicated thing that you're doing, the more likely it is you'd have to do that. Um, I didn't think this was going to be that complicated, but apparently, what's that? Yeah, so, th so there I've got the back neckline. I'm just going to tuck that in. So just make sure it's right and then make sure the sleeves are just nice and tucked in. Okay, so I've got the second half done. So exactly the same process. So I'm lining it up against the edge. So I've got that fold line. Draw around the lines again. Yeah, so this t-shirt I'm tracing around is 18 to 24 months, which is slightly too big for her. So therefore it's a good size to make clothes out of because um, then she can grow into them, they'll last a little bit longer. Okay, 
So I've traced round that. So I'm just gonna label it front t-shirt Rosina one centimeter seam allowance. I have done things before where I haven't labeled the pieces and then I don't know what they are and then I have to redo it. So um, then exactly the same process for this one, adding the seam allowance as well. So the most tricky part of this pattern is actually the sleeves. So what I am quite tempted to do for maybe one of the designs is just add a bit of sleeve on here to make a grown on sleeve t-shirt. Um, potentially I might do that uh, or I will try with the sleeves. Um, obviously I've not been taught how to dress sleeves and you can't really fold sleeves um, over too well but I will show you how I'm going to estimate doing it. Um, sometimes I don't measure my seam allowances and I just um, <laughs> just draw them in um, but I am doing it for this video so I can actually show you the, the way that I think it should be done. So yet again two at the neckband and two at the bottom seam. Okay. So that is the front and back completed now. What I'm going to do is just cut those out. both pieces out now what you can also do to remind yourself later is add the uh, line going round so that you know that it is to be placed on the fold if you want to add that um, onto there and what I'm just going to do is check that the two pieces just match up so I'm going to put the shoulder seams together and just see if the fold matches up to see. So the side seams, the side seams seem fine. There's a little bit of extra room in the back, but I think that that's about right. The back's a bit longer than the front and the side seams look Cut the um, shoulder seams look relatively fine. I think once they actually attach them together, they will be okay, but I might have to make some adjustments there, but that's fine. So I've got those two pattern pieces now, and it's just about the um, sleeve now. So I'm going to take my pins out. Now this is when I kind of <laughs> make it up a little bit more. Um, because actually, you know, I, I don't know how to draw a sleeve. I've not been taught that. Um, that's not something that I've been taught how to do. So this one's got a few gathers in the top there, and then it's very shallow. It looks, yeah, so if you look at the inside of it, it just disappears almost to nothing. So what I tend to do, and I don't, I don't know if this is right or not, um, this is what I've tried before and it, on the whole it worked, so I'm just going to try it that way again. So what I'm going to do is I just lay the sleeve out onto a piece of paper. I'm just going to mark where the curve is and then I fold it upwards like this <laughs> and draw that um, curving knowing that that's half of it now with an adult t-shirt this won't work um i would probably get a sleeve from another thing and then copy the arm side so the armhole onto this to get it um right um i think because this is a little girl's one it should be fine but i'll wait i mean i'll, I'll wait and see in, when i actually make the t-shirt um so I know that the length is going to be approximately right. And this one has got a slight curve. 
curve to it. So what we're going to do is just draw a gentle curve. Now that's the actual one. Now, because uh, I've drawn it so close to the edge here, I'm not going to be able to add the seam allowance on. So what I'm going to have to do is remember, I'll just write a note here, add two centimetres. Um, obviously you could just redraw it, but you know, for that. I'm not planning on doing that right now. And then my one centimetre seam allowance around the shoulder. Now, because it's this style of sleeve, I think this is going to be fine when you get into actually going under the armpit and things like that. I think it does need to be a bit more um, carefully done. But there's my pattern piece there to cut out. So I will put um, cap sleeve, t-shirt, Rosina. then using the paper scissors again. What I would do with this is I am going to mark where the top of the shoulder is, where this sh that shoulder seam is, which is that centre bit there. So I'm just going to cut in a small triangle so I know that that's where it is. And then I've got my little cap sleeve piece there. Now, if I was wanting to do a grown-on sleeve, I would probably just cut it that way out of the um, fabric. So I'm just going to show you um, how I would do it so that you can know. So if I wanted to do the grown-on sleeve, I would simply um, have this pattern piece and then I would draw around it again. And what I would do is mark these two areas. I would then do a curve at this one. So think about how close it is to the body. So I'm going to bring out that seam a little bit here. And then extend this line here. And then just come across at an angle. Um, so I'd basically have this same piece and then what I would do is cut that out and then use that to help me cut the back piece for that as well uh, and then that would be the grown all sleeve so I'm going to give that a try as well um, when I'm cutting her some t-shirts but now I've got the main kind of block for the body I could extend that to make a little dress or um, chop it off to add a little flounce of a skirt but actually and I know that it will always fit her. So I now have my pattern all traced. I've got the front piece that I will place on the fold, the back piece that I'll place on the fold, and then the sleeve piece as well. And I will use those to make a t-shirt as a test one, first of all, to then try onto my niece. And then I'll go ahead and use that to make lots more t-shirts. I will be filming a video of me making the first t-shirt of this so if you'd like to see that please comment down below and if you are going to try this technique again comment down below to let me know how you get on with it thank you so much for watching please click the thumbs up if you liked this video and subscribe if you want to hear more from me bye